Hello and welcome to my little part of the internet. My name is Pam. My pronouns are she, her, and I live in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, Canada on Treaty 6 territories. And those are the territories of the Métis, Dene, and Cree people. And this channel is a floss tube and named Hobbies and Hyperfocus. And the reason that it's named Hobbies and Hyperfocus is that although it's a floss tube, it, I'm often prone to changing hobbies. So if I do change hobbies or if I add hobbies, uh, they'll probably show up here eventually. Um, my main hobbies are cross stitch, but I also have been part of the planner community. I have tried knitting, sewing, quilting, interested in weaving, computer programming, languages, all kinds of things. And I, I switch around a lot. Uh, today is January 28th, 2024. I lost track. I was going to say Sunday, <laughs> Sunday, January 28th, 2024. Um, if you are a returning viewer, thank you for coming back. If you are new here, welcome. Um, again, today we're only going to talk about needlework and cross stitch, but keep following. Maybe someday I'll talk about something else. our feline companion, we have our projects and needlework, so let's do this. First things first, tarot of the day. Now, I drew this, which is the nine of swords, of swords, yeah, nine of swords, and I was like, okay, well, Maybe I was just feeling anxious and frustrated because my son keeps coming down the stairs and wanting to interrupt the video. And I, this is probably like, I think the 14th take. <laughs> so I'm getting a little frustrated. I think, so I, I, I between takes, I decided I was going to shuffle the deck. And the card came back. Now, every time I use this deck and I find a card and I shuffle it again, the same card comes up. This to me is an indication that this is actually the card of the day. So again, the card of the day is the Nine of Swords. The imagery on here is the Greek story of the Oracle of Delphi. And we can see the, um, the imagery is the mother and the child and the father. And this is the story of Oedipus. So Oedipus is the baby. And the Oracle of Delphi um, foretold that the king would be killed by Oedipus. And it comes to pass because he was so obsessed with this negative imagery of the, his son killing him that he treated the child badly through his whole life and then the child ended up killing him. I guess the moral of the story is don't plan in anxiety because if you focus on something negative you can it's a self-fulfilling prophecy it'll come to pass um it's pretty apropos for today because i was feeling very anxious i i find doing floss tube as much as i enjoy watching it and i i'm trying to connect with people i find it very anxiety creating <laughs> for myself i i don't like seeing myself on video and I don't like hearing my own voice. And I find the whole recording, I have to look at myself to see if I'm actually in the picture. And it, it's very anxiety producing. So the card means anxiety. Um, 
It can also mean nightmares or insomnia. Things that are anxious. And that is my entire life. So that is from the mystery. What is it? The mysteries of the divine? Tarot of the divine. That I got from Indigo Books here in Can in Saskatoon. So, yes, anxiety. So much anxiety. <laughs> um, that is watching me. She's just sitting on my other desk watching me. I've decided this time I'm going to try without the ring light on because if I do have to put my glasses on to see something, then I, I'm not focused on the ring in the glasses. So. But as long as I put the glasses on my head, then I can't see myself and I'm good. Okay, uh, works in progress. So these are some of them you'll see. I'm going to see. I don't know if I have. I'm going to start taking pictures um, the day after or the day that I do floss tubes so that the next time I do floss tube, I have what, where I was before, because I don't, I didn't do that before. So this is my 2023 botanical, um, botanical black work. This was, is a, was a project by the Steady Thread on Facebook, and it was a free stitch along, and I got almost all of them done. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I have seven left to do out of 49. So I'm slowly working on that. Uh, primarily I'm using, for most of them, I'm using 580 and the purple is 26. And I think this is 720. It's just a dark yellow. For some reason, I just decided I was gonna do this one stripe in yellow and the rest of them in purple. It was just, it, it was mostly because I wanted to do this one. If you can see, it's um, some flowers. But it's just one motif a week for 49 out of 52 weeks. Right. So I did, I've been following along with that. I, it kind of dropped off my radar last September and I haven't picked it up yet. Now, you've seen this one a lot, but it's almost done. So I wanna see if I can zoom in. Can I, no, I can't zoom in. Okay, this is the finished, almost finished um, Galaxy Temperature Sal. Uh, the pattern is from Climbing Goat Designs UK. This is the high-low version. So I stitch both the highest temperature of the day and the lowest temperature of the day because our, our, our temperatures here are very variable. So in the middle, I have sort of tried to draw, that's, this is Saskatchewan. Saskatchewan is mostly like a skirt shape. And then Saskatoon is roughly right there. And then it's 2023. The only thing I have left to do on this is the beads. So there's like beading all over the place. And I've got the male hell glow in the dark beads that I'm going to be using. So it'll glow in the dark when it's done. And I'm just going to finish this in a round hoop and then pull it tight. So that is one over two. I had 40 different colors for this one. And thankfully, or not thankfully, you can see here, this is the end, this was December, it was greens and yellows, which it was in the pluses at that time. And then a week and a half after, we dropped down to the really, really cold polar vortex that we usually have around this time of the year. It would have been interesting to see that whole color range, but for some reason, we just had a much more mild winter this winter. So this is 40 count 
carbon copy by dying for, for cross stitch and I ordered quite a lot from her but I I have quite a bit of this I have another whole quarter um I've been considering doing this year's uh temperature sal also by climbing goat designs um I wanted to do the moon phases but I haven't pulled the trigger yet because I don't know if I want to do it on black this was very difficult because I have very bad eyes. So I really, I want to do another temperature cell. I like doing temperature cells because I really like um, data. Like my, my day job, I'm a data manager. So I do a lot of data analysis and stuff as a career. So I really like things that are graphic images of data, which is why I was really drawn to the different temperature cells. And I, I would like to do one for 2024. So I have a few choices. I really like the moon phases, um, but there are so many temperature designs and I've seen so many people do them and I'm like, I can't do them all. I just want to do one a year. But I'm I'm just I can't pull the trigger yet. But I am tracking the, the the temperature so that when I do pick one, I can catch up. Okay. Then the next one I worked on, and um, I've been just doing five days on each project, or however many. <coughs> sorry. Or however many. Um, it takes to um to finish if i finish something then i'm done and i don't then i don't uh then i go on to the next project um if i sorry i'm just switching up my pat part that's here i i started trying the whip go because everybody does whip go or whip works in progress bingo basically and I had a really hard time setting it up I'm like if somebody else could set this up for me I'd probably be much happier like I give them all my whips and all my goals and maybe they could just do it for me because I have a hard time if, if something says just setting it up I don't have 24 whips. I don't have 24 big whips. I don't have 24 little whips, but I want to do one of each. So I'm kind of considering trying to, um, I tried to do, set up a board, one for smalls and one for larges, but I didn't, I just don't know how to set it up. So I just, I kind of gave up. So now instead I'm going to use the tiny decisions wheel and I'm going to have all the projects that I have on the go and then two starts on it. If I have the material for them, that's always the kicker with me is that I don't have a huge stash of material. I might have the DMC and I can always get DMC, but I don't have the material. So, if I'm going to start something, I have to know ahead of time because I have to order. Anyway, the next thing I worked on for five days was No Time Like the Present, which is the 2024 Modern Folk Embroidery Stitch Along. And it's really hard to see because, again, this is 40 count. So I'm doing it on, what is it called? December Fabric of the Month from Dying for Cross Stitch. And it is sort of like a yellowy greeny. It's a 40 count Verdal, which is, Verdal is even weaves. It's not linen, but I am doing it with these two colors, which is 581 and, ah, I cannot see, I'm too old. 
so originally I had another fabric picked out for this and I had everything and then I picked the colors and they did not go with it. So then I picked, I went on Dying for Craft Stitch, which as we know, I tend to order a lot from them. And it really, I was like, okay, this looks like it'll work. And I got it and it's just perfect. So I've done just this middle motif and it was four days. I had to pick it out. Um, oops. I had to pick it out a little bit because of course I miscounted and it, it's really, really even, like it's symmetrical. And I'm looking forward to doing more of this. I think this one might be my, my travel project this weekend when we go to Newfoundland. So because it's only got two colors, I can put it on a smaller hoop because I can do small bits at a time and it's done in Pattern Keeper. So I think this one's going to be my, probably going to be my travel pattern. And we'll talk about that in a bit. And this one I did. Then after I did that one motif, I went back and I started working on Sea Witch. And I think I do have a picture. I'm gonna put it in here. What I ha where I was before. Because I showed this on my last on my my last like year wrap-up thing that I did the last video. And I, I hadn't worked on it for two months at that point. But when I saw it on the video, then I had to do it again. And I really, like, I did mostly her her octopus legs. Her tentacles, that's what they're called. Not octopus legs. Tentacles. So, yeah, she really pops on this fabric. And I think this is called Mystical. It is, again, a 30 two or 36 count. I lost the little taggy. <laughs> and I got this from Kim uh, off of Bendy, Michelle Bendy Stitchy's community. Uh, Michelle was selling some of her, or not Michelle, Kim was selling some of her extra fabric and I, I felt that that would pop really well. And I've seen Ali Z is crafty and Kitchy Whips also did their Sea Witches. They also did them on a purple. So after seeing that, I totally copied them and <laughs> and I, I put her on a purple with the help of Kim, who is much better at picking colors than I. And I did five nights stitching on that. Um, what I generally do is I come home from work, I do, I walk the dog because he's been in his kennel all day. I'll walk the dog, I will get everything ready for supper, I will wash the dishes, feed the animals, make supper, and then after supper I get maybe an hour, hour and a half of stitching a night. And I've decided I'm going to try five nights or five sessions at a time to get to, on each project and then switch to another one using the tiny decisions wheel thing. That way I'm touching more of them and I don't put pressure on myself to try and figure out the whip go board because yeah, I, I struggled hard to do the whip go board. I, I didn't know which projects, <clears throat> I didn't know which projects to put on it. I felt awkward <laughs> going, do I want to do five nights? Do I want to do five hours? Do I want to do, how much is the goal? And I watched other people and when things came up on my board, I didn't want to do them because they were on my board because I was told I had to do them. So we have oppositional defiance as well going on. So I've decided just five, five days at a time each time and 
then I can <clears throat> try and touch everything or start a new one if I have material. Okay, and then after I did my five days, I did one night on this. Now, this is my quarter for the second most magnificent ink circles round robin, which was is hosted by Julicious. And I will be sending this to, I think I'm sending mine to Trina in Ontario. So I'm, I have until the end of March to send it. And so like I've done my quarter now and what I did is <clears throat> I used that one. That one is the called 4DMC. And I think this darker, yeah, this darker greeny brown is also the called for. And the rest are, I just switched them out. Uh, this was originally like a salmon orange color and like a light, light green, light tan color. And I didn't, I didn't think they popped. So I put in a bright purple. It's not going to focus. There we go. A bright purple and a teal because I thought those would pop more. So uh, I'm going to get ready, this ready to send off to the next person. And it is done on 36 count linen. And it is, picture this plus Highland. And just DMC because I couldn't get a hold of fancy glosses. Originally, I was going to use Conservatory by uh, Cottage Garden Threads, but there was, I was going to need another three meters and it, it was much harder to get a hold of it. I'd have to order it and it's like $9 or something Canadian with shipping. And I could just get the DMC for a buck. So I just got a variegated DMC. I don't even know what color that is, but it works. So yeah, that's, and I did one night on that and finished it up. All I had left was the inside of, of the path. So this is Forest Path by Ink Circles. So that one is ready to go on my most mag second most magnificent Ink Circles round robin. And I'm with Rob. Trina and Megan from the Long Distance Stitchers. And then last night, which was the last of my night's stitching, this is one day that I've done. Oops. I'll put my hand behind it. One day that I've done on the Mermaids of the Season Sal, and I'm on the winter one. So I think don't think I have I'll see if I have a picture if I have a picture I'll put in where I was before it was basically just this teeny blue part right here that's all I had done and then yesterday because on the weekends I don't really like to go out and do stuff I did all of the lighter but I do need to pick it out where this little line is here because I was off, I duplicated, I was watching a movie and I duplicated one line here and <laughs> then like it just didn't, doesn't work out, it doesn't match. Uh, once I'm done doing the stitching for this mermaid, then I'm going to start ordering the Krynix because I have no access to Krynix. Um, I have all the mermaids except for this one done and I'm ready for the Krynik and then the beads. But I, I, I would really like to get this done. This is the second uh, pattern that I've ever done from Bella Filipina. So Bella, the Drin, Drin is the designer and he designs for Bella Filipina. And I, this is the second one I've tried. Um, 
I'm also still working on the Crystal Mermaid Aquabella, which once I'm done my five days on this one or finished her, whichever comes first, I will then go back to her and do five days on the crystal mermaid aquabella because i would like to get her done now that i've like looked at the pattern again and i i saw why i chose her and now i'm really anxious to get back to her i think i need to have more of those foam boards you can see the tail is coming along all this part is crinix so i need silver peridot and i I think there's another blue in there. There's three blues. And I might have Peridot because I needed Peridot as part of the Trick or Treat Fairy. Had that Peridot as for the spider webs. <sighs> okay. So that is works in progress. Those are the works that I worked on. Next is finishes, and I've got two finishes so far in 2024. I know, who am I? Uh, so I'm part of D20 Stitches um, Stitch for Pride 2024, and it's a paid stitch along. It's actually closed now, so if you didn't get in on it, they said that they might be opening it up for some of these patterns later on. But just go over to D20 Stitches and they can tell you all of the details. But the first pattern that we did is Keith Herring. Herring? Herring? And this is designed by D. And it's inspired by Keith Haring. And I chose to do just the heart in, in a dark pink DMC. It's like a raspberry PM, DMC. And then I did a variegated DMC. It goes from sort of periwinkle blue to purpley color. And I'm off by like, you can see right there, I'm off by like a half a stitch. This is just white 28, 30. I'm not even sure. I should probably actually count an inch and see what it is. I think it might be 32. But it's just even weave that I got a long time ago and I have a crap ton of it. So I thought that this would work well on it. So this is the Keith Herring design by T D's 20 Stitches. And I think I might make this into like a patch or something. I'm not sure. I have all kinds of plans, but I don't actually do them. But I like this. It was an easy stitch once I got going and it was a two night project. That's one. And then the second one I finished is my little brown bat by Cottage Garden Samplings, and I did not iron it yet. So the total looks like this. I have my beaver. Sorry. I have my beaver. Stretch him out. And I have my bat. And I think I'm just going to, I think they're about five by seven. So I might just try and do them myself, but I have never actually done any stretching or finishing on my own. This is 40 Count Oaken by Picture This Plus, and it's all one over, this one is one over one um, DMC, and this one is one over one DMC, and there were some what do you call them? Detailing. Weeks Dye Works. There was a few Weeks Dye Works in here that I'd had for a while. And I just decided to use, I think, 
It was in the beaver, his butt. His butt. This variegation here. I think that was either color and cotton or weeks dye works. I know one of them was a different color. And I, it's a, a one that I don't usually use anymore. So I think it was Weeks Dye Works. It was only a, the little bit that I had left of it. So that is my second finish for 2024. So those are my finishes. <sighs> Purchases. So I bought two things off the House of Bezos or Amazon this little while. I got myself some new scissors. They're rainbow butterfly scissors. And I did that because I usually use the traditional crane embroidery scissors. I have a hard time because I keep losing them in my couch. So I figured if I had a second set of scissors, then I'd stop losing them. Or at least I have scissors. So I bought those off Amazon. And the other thing I bought has a new set of magnifying glasses. I need magnifiers because generally I need glasses to see. Um, I wear contacts when I stitch. And even though when I wear my glasses, I can't put on additional magnifiers. So I have to wear contacts when I stitch. And then <laughs> so I have this and it has a little button on this side so I can so I can see even on black fabric. So these have come with this little head thingy that holds it on. Otherwise, they're too big um, and it has so it has five different like magnifying amounts um this is the weakest magnification which is two and it goes up to i think five i never really needed them but i had some similar ones before and they have these like these nose thingies and they they're covered with a plastic but they're metal and what happens is after we're using them and wearing them for a while this rubber bit falls off and then it's just bare metal and I was finding it very very uncomfortable because I kept putting like a silicone pad or other padding things in there in order to wear them but the little padding things would fall off and it like it would be scratch my nose and it was like <sighs> so I bit the bullet and I got these and these, unlike the other ones, don't have batteries. They have, they're rechargeable. So you just plug it in and recharge it. So I'm not putting three AAA batteries like right on the bridge of my nose either. So those are the two things that I bought other than my 40 count Verdal from Dying for Cross Stitch. Okay, and plans. So, uh, I was watching, I think it was the Huga Stitcher, Samantha the Huga Stitcher, and she mentioned that they're having a Year of the Dragon stitch along this year. So I was like, okay, I'm sure I have a dragon pattern. And I, I went through and I have two dragon patterns. The only problem is I no longer seem to have the original pattern for one of them. Um, so I have this one, which is by Patricia Allison, which I bought when it came out and it came out in 2023, 2003. So it is 11, 23 years old, 20, 21 years old. This pattern I've had for 21 years and I was like, oh, it's a paper pattern. Yeah, but it's a dragon. And I was like, well, do I have any fabric I could do it on? Well, it seems like last year, for some reason, I got a bug in my head 
that I wanted to do something on a yellow fabric. Probably because I saw somebody else do something on a yellow fabric. So I had ordered this from Traditional Stitches. So it is Sunflower by Seraphim Dye Works. And it is, what is it, a 30, 36 count. Sunflower Fields. And I thought, this looks like it would work really well on this. It's autumn colors. And so I'm thinking I'm going to kit this up. And maybe do this for this, the Year of the Dragon. Since I have it and it does, it will fit given the dimensions. It is an old style pattern. So a lot of backstitch and a lot of blends. Um, sorry about that. That was a kid interruption. Apparently he's got a bug up his ass about going to a convenience store that he remembers going to once when he was like four. Unfortunately, it's usually weird, cheap candy with like garbage pails or toilets or something that he wants. And I'm, I'm mm -mm, we don't need to do that. So I had to cut out a huge meltdown that happened while he came down. So I was back to my dragon. So this is the Seasonal Dragon's Autumn by Patricia Allison. And it was designed in 2003, so 24 years ago, or 21 years ago. And I want to do it on the 36 count Sunflower Fields by Seraphim. The other option I had for this was the Celestial Dragon by Teresa Wensler. And I know that I owned the pattern at one point because it was another one in the book of all patterns that I had, but this one, this pattern came out of. Um, back in the olden days, in 20, I, I previously stitched um, from about 1990 to about 2007, just before I went through my divorce. And I used to keep all of my patterns in report sleeves in a big binder because <clears throat> there I didn't I had digital patterns but I'd print them off. And that was I had the Teresa Wensler, like the card fold out of the Celestial Dragon, but I had made a working copy. Now I still have the working copy, but I no longer have the original. So I'm not sure what the rules are. If the cross stitch police will come out and get me if I try and stitch the celestial dragon from my working copy when I don't have the original anymore or how that all works. I looked everywhere and I cannot find the original for that pattern. So I have this one and I have that one. Those are the two dragons that I have. Um, more things that I'm working on. Um, I have a, I purchased the pattern Grief Knows No Bounds. And this is a pattern designed by Michelle Bendy Stitchy, Marumi, Miriam from Marumi Crafts, Miriam from Crafty Yams, I think. Yasmin made with love and I can't remember who the fifth one was. I'll try and put it down below. I'll find it. But <clears throat> this is a charity pattern and you can get it from any of those five designers, if you donate $15 to a Medicine Sans Frontières or Doctors Without Borders, um, I think, 
UNPRC is the other one, and the Parent Circle. So if you donate to one of those three, a minimum of $15 Canadian or US, and you send the receipt to any of the five designers, they will send you the pattern. Now, I haven't started it. So I have to, because I have to order more fabric. I don't have enough fabric for that one. And that is <clears throat> in support of Palestine. Um, as well, I want to, I have a pattern by Hib Stitches, which is, I'll try and put up here. Um, and again, you can, if you message DM hip stitches from Instagram, that's how you get that pattern. And again, you donate to, I'm not sure which, I cannot remember what organization, but if you contact them, they will tell you how that, how to work, how to do that. And also Deanna from Darling and Whimsy Designs has a pattern for Palestine, which I want to do. Um, it's a small, it's quirky Quaker. And I think that's on her Patreon. I'll have to check. But I've been doing a lot of thinking about what's going on in Palestine. And I know it for some reason polarizes people the idea that people are not immediately on the side of Israel and I'm not sure I don't want to get into the nuances of it but all I see is soldiers laughing and cheering while they're killing people and people who are dying and I can't, can't look away. So I'm doing what I can to support those organizations who can get in to, in to help out. Uh, I guess as of yesterday, UNRWA, U-N-R-A-W, has been defunded by certain companies countries and I'm pretty sure Canada is one of them because we're right in there with the rest of the colonial colonial governments <laughs> and uh, so getting aid into that area and anyway I have always been giving money for the last I think five years I have been, had a monthly donation to Amnesty International. And on top of that, this year I've decided to also, I've taken away some of the other things that I, that I do monthly donations to, and I've put those monthly donations towards Medicine Sans Frontier, which is Doctors Without Borders. Um, because I can't look away from the things that are happening in the world and I can't believe my government is on is is not supporting these people that they've gone on and on about being peacekeepers and all this and now you see them just turning their backs on them because they have to support Israel and I'm not sure why I just I don't see any good coming of blowing everybody else up I don't believe that what we did in Canada to the native people was done was right or the US and I don't see this as being technically correct either or even untechnically correct it's not nice it's not right and I know that most people don't agree with me 
because I've gotten a lot of blowback from co-workers and people like that for being in support of ending this conflict, this genocide. And I, I just can't. I can't look away and I can't support genocide. And with that happy note, we are going to end this stream and I'm going to edit this and we're going to get it up and I will take the blowback because I'm not sure that there's going to be blowback on that. So until next time, I'm Pam. This is my stitching channel. Please hit the, hit the subscribe button. I'd like to get to 100. Right now I'm at 70. I'd like to get to 100 subs. Um, I'm out here talking about cross stitch and needlework and apparently politics. And you can find me on Instagram at Hobbies and Hyperfocus. You can always message me there. And see you next time. Put it down now, now. For you thing to explain it. Hi. Hi. My name is Ten Old and I'm How old are you? And I'm six years old. And I got this thing. It's I don't know what you called it. Fire thing? telescope, microphone, and pixel words. Pixel words. And what do you say? I don't know. Are you done? Yeah. Then you say goodbye. Goodbye. I want to make another, I'll make another thing. What else do you want to do? Like, let's hurry this up, Dan, because I really don't want to play this game today. I'm really no 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 no. Okay. What is this story? This. No, tell us what it is, Dan. What is this? It is pop. What is that? That's a popcorn. So what does it start with? No. A pop. A corn. Mhm. And then and then I turned it to. Corn seed, and then it went into, the, and then it went into the a box, and, the, and some came out, and then more came out, and it was the last one, and then finally it got, and finally it got, to, finally it went into the oven, started as a seed, grows, grows. Until it burns, 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 and then finally the fire, fire went out, and the fire, fiery rainbow stuff went on it, and it growed back, but the norm, mobile, norm, it grows back normal, and then bush and, and then it breaked open and the seed breaked open and there was two popcorns. Okay. The end. And and then the words. Mm -hmm. What are the words? Ultra. Ultra virus. And? Ultra growth. Okay. The end.